Uh, cool. Uh, thank you for having me. Hello, I'm uh, Damien, as you can see. Uh, it's uh, also spelled, uh, pronounced Dulish, which is very hard. So that's the news part. Um, if you're not a subscriber, uh, I urge you to, to join the subscriber list. We just passed uh, 20,000 subscribers, which, is, which I think is a lot. Uh, and also, this is a very common question because I get a lot of emails with like, uh, submissions. There is the submit button, so please use it whenever you find something interesting on Vue. Uh, I read everything, which is not always uh, fun, but yeah, someone that gets to do it, right? So I also do some open source work, uh, some of which I'm more proud than the other. Uh, I guess which ones? Uh, but I very much like the Vue Global events with Eduardo. That's, that's the best to it. Uh, library because there is hardly any maintenance. Uh, and also, I work as a technical lead at CourseDoc, uh, which is a um, company that builds um, scheduling platform and some like, events management things for uh, US-based universities, which is also kind of fun, but also scary sometimes. So yeah, uh, using the occasion, I would like to thank all of my GitHub sponsors our supporters, so Vue Confuse, Vue School, Vue Mastery, Vue Jobs, and also those uh, individuals that I know some of them are here, so thank you very much for doing it and helping me put some more time on open source. So, validations in the composition age. Uh, that's a very fancy topic name, I think. Uh, but then, yeah, there comes the presentation, the actual thing. So, uh, let's take a, look, a quick look at what we have in Vue 2.x. So, uh, who's using vValidate? Okay, plenty, so let's see the competition. Who's using Validate? Okay, I'm hard to tell whether which one is like which one is more popular. Based on the start, we validate is more popular, and I think it's a very good library. But there is a, a core dif uh, like a huge difference between them. So uh, we validate is using a template driven, and as you can see, um, we have the main main um, validator put into the template, and this is going to be used to validate the input inside. Whereas in Validate, we are, uh, it's a model-based validation library, so we have this local state, uh, password and repeat password. And then we have mm, the validation rules, which have to map to the local state that we have, our getters, uh, computer properties, like we can validate anything with it, as long as it is on the component. And then you pass some functions that should uh, either return true or false, uh, depending whether the test is passed or not. So, but there are some problems with Validate, and if you've been working with it, uh, like I did, you probably noticed that there is, uh, all the validations are eager, so they execute whenever you run the, uh, well, the application, uh, which is not always uh, good. Uh, then there is also no error messages, which is a uh, huge miss for us. Uh, I'm not sure how we end up there, but. There is a library for it, view error extractor, which, yeah, uh, you can use. Uh, but why would you need another library to, to just have error messages, right? Um, async validators, not that great also. And the fact that you need to declare all the validation rules up front is uh, sometimes a big problem, especially since uh, passing the validation results from like child components to parents is also quite uh, hard, I'd say. So, well, and for, from like a maintainer perspective, uh, the code is kind of hard to, to get through, especially with all the hacks that we had to you do with, uh, for like Vue 2.8 to, to make it work. So, yeah, uh, Vue 3, what is changing? So without any like, yeah, it's, it's there already, uh, an alpha version actually, which you can install. Uh, the alpha zero is still for view 2.x when you use the plugin, uh, but we already have uh, another working version for view uh, 3.0 that I think we could release uh, maybe this weekend. I wanted to do it like yesterday, but yeah, uh, too many things. Uh, so uh, it's a complete rewrite. Uh, from scratch, we throw almost everything away except for the validators. It's built for view 3, obviously. Um, with the composition function, uh, composition API, so mostly the, the standalone uh, reactivity API, we are able to like cut the code in half and simplify it like hugely, uh, whereas still keeping most of the features and adding several new ones, which I will mention in a moment. 
and it's still like super small. Like right now, it's like 1.6 kilobyte. Uh, I mean, zip, so it's super small. And we want to keep most of the backwards compatibility. There were some hiccups now and then, but I think we'll get there. So uh, just an example of the new um, syntax when you're using uh, setup. So let's, we have some local state, password, repeat password, we return it from our setup function. And then we use this use validate function where first we need to pass the rules and then we pass the state that we want to validate, right? Uh, and here is an example of the rules. So you can see it's basically a copy paste of what you had in uh, validate 0.x. Um, well, for example, for same as you can pass uh, the, the reference to uh, the actual um, variable that you want to compare against, right? And then you can return the, the, uh, the variable, which is the reactive validation result. Uh, the thing is, you, we had to switch the convention and start with uh, v dollar sign, or and you, you can actually name it the way you want, because now you're not able to return uh, variables that start with a dollar sign, which is okay, I guess. So, oh gosh, demo time. Okay, um, so here it is. Uh, the buttons are supposed to look like this. You're not supposed to know what's there uh, until we get there. So uh, we get a very simple form. Uh, there is a text uh, from text input, uh, an errors list component, another uh, text input, a button, and, and yeah, that's it. And there's the declaration. So we get a user email, password, and then we have the, we just create the validate results object and return it. So here we have um, some yeah, um, validators that we imported. Um, and, and let's see how it works. So is this big enough? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so as, uh, here is the validate results, uh, the, the output. And as you can see, there is like nothing there yet. And I start typing and I guess it's broken. Well, you could think so if you use the old validate because uh, at the time, it would already run all of the validators. But here, uh, one of the changes that we have, and yeah, the button spoiled it probably, uh, is that we have lazy validation. So unless you actually trigger the validations, as in change their uh, state for, like, for the whole form, or for maybe for specific properties, you change the dirty state to true, it will start validating. So for example, now, you can see that, uh, for example, the password, um, is uh, not passing and we get some error messages. And that's the second news is that now all the validators come with predefined messages, uh, error messages, which can be uh, strings or functions, which I will mention in a moment. And all the uh, res like errors uh, from specific properties, so in this case from the password, we got one error for required and once we start typing, it is changed into min length validator, which is now failing because the required is already, is already passing. And as you can see, uh, the same is for the um, user email, which then it's, hey, it's not an email. And all of those uh, errors are being collected at the root. So let me just, just like fix it. And yeah, and it works, no errors, perfect. So uh, another change that we have is that now that I like, start typing in the, uh, so we get this special logger validator here, which is just a function that always returns true, so it always passes, but it has a console log here, right? And if I type something, well, it's being triggered, right? But if I reset the, uh, the form, so it is not, um, yeah, just like I said, lazy validators are not being triggered. But also, uh, if uh, there is a way to trigger um, the dirty state automatically, uh, thanks to proxies that Sarah just explained. So we can uh, set this um, config property out to dirty to true, and then whenever we start, uh, oops, we type something in, you will see that actually, if we type something here, oh, oh, I think I used the model here. Oh yeah, that's the second way to, to trigger the uh, dirty state, that's fine. Uh, but in here, um, you will see that even if I type in, in the password, the other validators are not being called, 
which is a huge improvement compared to uh, previous VLD date, where it started as a huge, compu uh, huge computed, which whenever something changed, had to recompute the whole tree. Now it's not the case. We are able to track specific properties. So if I type into the email, you can see that it triggers the, uh, the logger component. But if I remove the flag, it won't. So, uh, and then the, so this is the way to, uh, a way to trigger the uh, dirty state automatically. The other way is to use, instead of just using password, we have a proxy to the, to the model, uh, as in to the value, through the uh, validate object, then the property, and then dollar sign model. So if you modify this one, it will change the dirty state to true. So, uh, okay, and then there is another thing that we uh, introduced, which I think is probably the most important improvement, which are nested validation, validations. So now uh, we have three components, and the borders that you can see indicate like this is a component, and there is another component inside, and there is another component inside, right? So uh, let me just close this. So nested validations, we have this button here, and then we just have this nested A button, which has some form inside and some dynamic rules. Uh, so in here, we have uh, use validate, which doesn't uh, get any arguments, but that's fine. We just need to create a, a validate results object. Uh, and with the new functionality, it will, like if I change something here, nothing happens. So, oh, it's auto dirty. Oh, gosh. Uh, but the thing is, if we, for example, we got this uh, button to trigger the touch method, which is a way to um, set dirty state on the whole form, it will also involve all child components or indir indirect child children. So if we press submit, it will trigger all uh, validations in child components or nested components. And then it will also collect all of the errors from child components without you having to worry about it uh, to the top uh, and have, it them, have them here. And also, all the rules, so let's open the nested A component. You will see that we have this nested value, which is this, this one, and then we have those uh, maximum minimum uh, numbers that are actually used as the uh, arguments for the validators. So of course, if we modify those, we can yeah, make sure that the form is being, is like passes. So this is actually pretty good because uh, if we want to but build more complex uh, forms where we have like specific components to handle uh, specific fragments of our state. Uh, it's very easy to to get uh, all the validation results to the very top, where we can like have like a submit button, which won't work unless everything is validated. And also then uh, with the composition API, what we can do is that the fact that now we can take out the validation rules from the component itself. And instead, for example, create like a use signup function, which can have its own state, then can have its own validation rules for the state that it expects to, uh, us to provide them, and then just return the validation results for this uh, fragment of, of state of, of the, for the functionality, like Greg explained, where we had this, like we can split our components into uh, smaller functions that contain this specific functionality and just care about it and then just compose it together. And then inside our component, we can just use it, pass, uh, uh, take the values, put them on, uh, return them from the, uh, to the view, and also get the validation results and also use those for, uh, for us. So that's the first part of the demo. So let's just sum up. We have this uh, bit in error messages support. And all the 21 validators that we have right now, uh, they all come with predefined error messages, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. And you can import those from the add validate slash validators, which as you might assume already, is a separate package, which is fully tree shakeable, has a separate release cycle. Uh, and it's very easy to contribute to. And now we will be able to have as many validators as you want without actually affecting your bundle, because you can just import the ones that you use in also in only all the places where you want them. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool. 
Um, and if you want to build your own validator, that's like as simple as this. I mean, this is a complicated example. Like this is probably the most complicated example. So we have uh, a validator is either a function, like you've seen the logger, it has just, uh, returns true or false. And this is the function that will be used inside the validator property. Um, in this case, it's the mean length, which is just a simple function. Uh, and then we have this property dollar sign message, which can be either a string or a function. And the function uh, receives all the, the whole error uh, property, uh, which includes like property name, whether it's pending or not, because we also have async validators, um, whether um, what's the model value, uh, the current value, what are the params. And in this case, the mean length accepts a length, like expected length. And we just pass it to the params, the, the treat property, and then we get it uh, inside, the uh, inside the message function. So we can also use this for translations because you can just pass any message uh, and, and let it like, put, like, it should be longer than five. Powinno być dłuższe niż pięć, like if you want to translate it, right? Um, so, uh, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, so you will be able to, to submit those and we should be able to publish those very uh, quickly, or you can just have your own validators for your own library, your own messages. You can always override those messages and so on and so on. But where do we use uh, validators? Usually, like, that's forms, right? Uh, so, in my work, uh, we have forms like this, which, yeah, on the screen they seem huger than they are in reality. Uh, yeah, must be the screen. Uh, but you would say, like, sure, like, just like, put some components that handle like, the inspectors component and the credits component, and inside you just put some divs, some uh, inputs, and so on, right? Except there is the plot twist. There is an edit button that was hidden previously. So uh, we need to give the user full control for uh, the, the form. So they need to be able to rearrange this with a drag and drop, change the, uh, the setup for all of the uh, elements, the inputs and so on and so on. So what is the solution? Anyone knows like, how to do that? You can shout, like, ah, OK. It's actually pretty scary, but uh, then uh, there is the solution, schema-based forms. So who has been using schema forms or the idea generally? OK, OK. Who has been trying to use Viridate with it and failed? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. So uh, some issues with some existing schema form libraries is that, I mean, it's an issue and not an issue, depending on what you need, uh, because most of them come with already some existing uh, user interface um, components, like for input components, like text, for like, type text, for type number, for type date, and so on and so on, which is cool if you just need those. But if you're using a library like uh, Beautify or Quasar, you already have components for this, right? So you need to like remap those sometimes, and then it might not be very com compatible, and so on and so on. So there is the twist, right? And also, usually, if you have more complicated forms, say you, you, your form element is actually a map where you put pins on it, well, it might be very hard to have a schema form cover that uh, by default, right? Uh, and come with a component that is uh, that supports it. So. The other thing is that uh, they, if there is a validation, uh, like functionality in this uh, library, it's usually it's their own validation. So if you're already using Validate or uh, vValidate, you can't really use, like you're shipping the same functionality in just like two other, like two uh, packages, which are not really compatible with each other. So there is this, a solution, an early library that we created, which is called FarmViolate Latte, uh, which is because we like coffee. And it also, it's a pun on the word formulate. Okay. It's not a very good pun, uh, I guess. That's fine. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. I got my coffee, right? I mean, I will get my coffee soon. So the main idea here is that it's bring your own components. So we actually, because I actually hate building UI components as an open source UI components after the multi-select fiasco. So um, you bring your own components here. Uh, and the only requirement is that uh, it, is, it should support the model, um, the functionality. So it should accept the, the value, uh, emit the event that is now 
uh, update column model value, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the only requirement. And yeah, it shouldn't mutate the value, but I guess you already know that you shouldn't mutate the props, right? And it's super lightweight, like it's like a uh, 100 lines of code. And it was created by me and Marina Mosty, which is awesome. And let's do another demo. So we have nine minutes, wow. So let's do it very quickly. Simple form. Here is a schema. As you can see, I'm importing the uh, inputs, as in the input components, form text, form checkbox. And then I'm just creating a schema, returning it uh, to our view, passing it to schema form. We have a, a V model on user data. And once I start typing, the form fills itself. Perfect. And then also, it can, be, can do much more than that, because if we do to fancy form, you will see that we can have like an email model uh, component, which acts like a black box. So we don't really specify what type of data there is. It can be anything. So in this case, it's actually two inputs, but it could be the map where all of the pins or whatever, or like a complicated instructor uh, or a meeting pattern kind of thing. And once you pass the, like some data there and you save, it fills in inside the email template property. Okay, and yeah, also the other thing is that the schema itself could be a computed property, so it can be dynamic. So depending on whether we pick the, are you a view fan? If it's true, there is another uh, input showing that we can start filling, and there is. And of course, the treat example is formception. So formception which is basically nested forms where you can have a schema inside a schema and then another schema and you can go infinite to the point where you break the browser, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it works pretty nicely. And so yesterday I also created this, this, this next thing and I guess just got seven minutes, so I will try to show it to you. So I built um, a plugin system for Formulate so that you can uh, actually extend it with extra functionalities because like usually with the schema forms, like I said, I failed trying to connect it with uh, Vulidate, uh, the old version. So I decided to write uh, like a bridge so I could connect in uh, the new version with schema form, but not only with Vulidate. So uh, I think it should be possible to wire it up with the validate also. So yeah, we'll see how it, uh, how it goes. So um, let me just walk you uh, uh, through this very quickly. So we got this, uh, and there is going to be some, uh, I would say, more complicated magic here. Uh, but you will be able to see the demo, uh, see the code, see the libraries later, uh, and just like figure it out yourself. So we have the schema form factor. We import the schema form component here. We take the original setup, which looks like this. That's the original setup. It does some work required for the schema form. And this is what it returns. Uh, so we get this schema form factory. We take the original setup, save it as an original setup. Then we create a new setup function which receives props and context that you already know if you paid attention to other talks. And then we call the original setup with those props and context to get the base schema form return. So this is what the schema would normally return. And then depending on the plugins that we receive here, we either just return the base uh, schema form returns. So the schema factory will just return itself if there are no plugins. But if there are plugins, we do a reduce on all of, all of those plugins where we pass the results from the previous step to the plugin along with props and context. And then we just return it. And at the end, uh, the schema form factory is returning, uh, like it spreads the uh, schema form, so the render function will be preserved or any other things that they are, like uh, CSS if there were any. And the new setup, so it's kind of like calling super in class components uh, or, or classes. Uh, so that's, let's take a look how the uh, plugins look like. So we got this use validate plugin, which gets the base returns, props, and from the context, we get the, just the emit. Oh, I think it's not re longer required. Yeah. yeah. OK, so from the base returns, we get the parsed schema, where we parse the object syntax to an array, so we can iterate through it. And then we 
extend the uh, existing component, the input component that we passed, with a higher order component here. Uh, who's familiar with higher order components? Okay, okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. It's not very common to use those in, in, in Vue. Uh, it's usually useful for like weird cases like this one. So we pass in comp the component here, and then we return another component, which, as you can see, renders the original component with all the props and attributes uh, and listeners, but, but now uh, they are props, I think. So uh, it will be kind of invisible, except it's going to have another component around it, which is like a renderless component. And we are passing another property, another prop, which is vResults. And then we have this uh, new setup where we take from the uh, props, we take the validations, and you can see those validations here because this is how you will be able to use this. So we just pass validations for last name, validations for email. So we get those validations here, the, the, the list of uh, the object of validations. We get the name of the model, the value, and then we just create our local validate uh, validation object, return it, and then the component, the next, the component will be injected with those. But this is, it doesn't end there because we need a way to show the uh, validation results. So we have another plugin which adds a wrapper component. So here is the original component, and there is the errors list component that I've been using in other examples. And yeah, fast forward, it just works. And it's pretty cool. And it should make, make my work easier, and hopefully also yours. So um, there are some other ideas that I just don't have the time to share. Uh, but if you have any ideas that you would wish to uh, that validate or formulate or any other libraries could be there around like, to, uh, that we should do, uh, yeah, like, let us know in the issues. So the roadmap for formulate is adapters for UI libraries like Beautify, for example. So um, you can just like add a plugin and then, for example, instead of uh, giving it a component, it would just say a type, which would say like text, and it would use a uh, beautify text input. Uh, and then also a plugin that will inject it with the correct validations, uh, because I, I think Viridate has this, uh, sorry, uh, beautify, oh gosh, those names, uh, like V error, that you can pass the error and it will be displayed. And also parsers, so who's familiar with, schema, uh, with JSON schema? Yeah, so you should be able to just like pass the JSON schema and it's uh, uh, like create like a map where you, pass, uh, where you map the type to your component that you want to use. And it should just like transform the schema and basically like create, render the form for you. And also the plugin system, which is almost ready, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that was the demo. So, meet the team. Um, I'm the, the guy on the stage, obviously. Uh, there is also Dobromir, uh, Natalia, who's there and Marina Mosti, so uh, I'm glad they, they joined and made uh, a huge difference when it comes to, like, without the team, like, just op doing open source is very, uh, like, can be anxious, so, so yeah. I'm glad that, that they are here and they help a lot and we can push this thing forward. So, that's it. Here's the link to the demo. Uh, it also includes the prototypes for the new libraries, uh, new versions for Vue 3. Um, play with it, uh, give some feedback on the issues. Uh, uh, just make sure to, to mention me um, because there are just so many issues, it's very hard to keep track of it. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, oh. All right, thank you so much, Damien.